Hi everyone, I'm Eric. And I'm Christopher. And we're Grow For Me Gardening. Today we're going to show you how we prune clematis. Or as some people say, clematis. Well, welcome to our garden. We are here in upstate New York in zone 5B slash 6A right on the border. And today we're going to take you through our garden and kind of explore and show you how we take care of clematis. No, 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 clematis. So the clematis in our garden is rather <laughs> new. We have recently fallen in love with it in the last few years. So our specimens are pretty young. So what you're going to see are clematis, 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 that'll work <laughs> in groups two and in groups three. So there are three pruning groups of clematis. There is pruning group one, pruning group two and pruning group three. We don't have any pruning group one in our garden, but we do have pruning group two and pruning group three. And Christopher is going to tell you all about the three different groups. So as Eric said, we do not have any pruning group one. The interesting thing about pruning group one is you really don't have to prune anything but dead tips. They only bloom on old wood, um, beautiful flowers, but they don't need any maintenance from us. We just haven't happened to pick up any. But there's one I saw recently that might be coming out in the next year or two that I have uh, have my eye on. But is this a situation kind of like with a big leaf hydrangea or an oak leaf hydrangea? Yeah. Where if it needs pruning, like dead branches or whatever, you would do that after it flowers? Yes, yeah, so you can prune it after it flowers. Like, like Yeah, like the disease damage dead kind of thing. And you can shape it a little bit, but you want to do that right after it flowers. So Let me pop up a couple pictures on the screen so people can see what some of them look like but I actually didn't find too many varieties that are readily available. So pruning group one sounds really easy, really low maintenance. Absolutely. So let's walk over here to Ruoodle. Ruoodle? I don't know. I don't know how you say it. It is very funny. It's Ruoodle. And I got to tell you this one, Eric and I are on the fence about, well, I'm on the fence. Eric's not on the fence. I'm not sure I love it in this location. Um, it's I'll a... tell you why I love it in this location because Clematis love having their roots in the shade, their feet in the shade, and their face in the sun. Mm -hmm. And in this spot, it's perfectly protected um, at the base, and then it gets to rise and shine and reach out over the wall while we're sitting up on the terrace. So I like it here, but why don't you like it here, Christopher? So my first reason is the color. It is a little bit redder than anything else we have in the garden, and it's definitely... Um, in stark contrast to the beautiful gold smoke bush color. So I'm not sure I love that. But my main reason is actually over here. This is a pagoda dogwood that gets a beautiful horizontal branching. And I'm worried that these branches are really going to take over that space, especially because it's going to get taller and send out another tier. So I'm wondering if it's going to have its feet in the shade and its face also in the shade pretty soon. So you think this will grow that fast? I think we got a couple more years at least. We have a couple we have more years. About. All right. So it's going to stay this year anyway, because we haven't <laughs> fully decided. So this is how you win, folks. This, yeah. Um, <laughs> it's all right. The thing about pruning group two is it doesn't need a tremendous amount of pruning. You really just need to go down and find some buds and go there with your um, pruners. My goodness with the words today. And you prune above the buds. You prune right? above the buds, leaving just a little bit of the stem. Pruning group two does grow on old and new wood. So you're gonna get those big, big flowers in the late spring, early summer, and then it will potentially bloom again for you. Um, so you can see this has a little uh, chicken wire cage on it because it was actually eaten to the ground once last year. But I want to encourage branching just like we do with all our other specimens and here is a really good example of a place where it's going to branch for us so what i think i'm going to do is take it here with my goal to have the split at this second level of the uh, essex trellis i was reading that it's a good idea to leave a little bit of stem above it because somehow it just tells the plant to that this is new and it wants to grow up and out so I'm going to go around here and oh look at this. Here's another set of beautiful buds. Leave a little bit. Can of, I just get in a little closer? Yeah, get a little closer in here. So right in front oh, of my yep. hand. See, see those, those swollen buds? Now, if you look up one notch, see there's another set right here ready to go. But I don't want them to be the ones. I'm going to do this one. So I'm going to prune right there. Beautiful. 
And then, let's see, here's another set on this side here. Let's see if I can get in can there. Get in there. Yep. Boop. So the higher buds are a little more swollen. The right higher now. buds are a little more swollen. I wonder if they get more sun, honestly. So I'm going to go again right here. And then they're all pruned at that same level. And we can go ahead and take off our old vines from last year. And that's that's the whole thing for this young group two clematis named Oodle. And one of the reasons I wanted the clematis here was to block the electrical because it's something that if we ever needed to cut it back really hard to get to electrical stuff, it wouldn't suffer too deeply. Same thing with the smoke bush. You yeah. can cut that to the ground and it'll be fine. Yeah, so this is good. So if this starts to split here and get thicker on the top, we'll be able to see it. Also, these feet are going to get very covered because these are Empress Wu hostas that will certainly fill up the space. So this right here is the Stillwaters Clematis, and this Clematis. is also Pruning Group 2. The We switched out this trellis. This was a Square Essex trellis. We're moving that to the border, and then we're putting in the round one here only for aesthetics, no other reason. But this one has big, beautiful blooms that are like an indescribable color. It's like periwinkle, iridescent. I like watercolor lavender, maybe? It's as if it's still waters. Yes, perhaps. Should I prune it and then put the trellis on it? I think we should. What I okay. would do if I were you, give this a bit of a harder prune, um, and then we'll, uh, we'll let it do its thing. Okay. So it so did just rain, so everything's a little squishy. Yeah, so let's um, see if we avoid stepping on um, all these daffodils that are coming. I think I've avoided so far, but see where you, you never know with my big feet. Let's get in there. It's hard with the chicken wire on there to see what to do. And the chicken wire is here to protect it from rabbits. Let me just kind of organize it a bit. Oh, that looks good. Why don't you just cut that top chunk off that's and then in the way? Yeah, that's in the way. Oh, these pruners are the best. There's that noise. Okay. Thank and you. That, that bag. Do you see so your... I see these swollen buds here, and then I'm going to go about an inch above them. Yeah, an inch or two above them. It's an, It was interesting to read that they, they might like that. We got some good vines last year on this. Oh, these blooms were gorgeous last year. I'm sure we have a picture. Again, these are these are immature specimens. Let's see if I can get in here because it's. I mean, is this something where you where... could just like cut it to the ground and be fine? I would cut it above your first split of the vine, so you could go in this case probably three inches from the ground and it would be fine. But this is just gonna encourage it to get like a nice base. I can see it's green when I cut it. Yep. Mm. Am I going down far enough, you think? Yeah, you're fine. A couple more there and it'll be perfect. Yeah, these, a weird branch. these type two just have the biggest, happiest blooms. Yep, there's a little broken one. I think you did it. I think I did it. Now we just got to get this trellis on it. So did uh -oh. I just missed my pocket. Yeah, you missed your pocket and threw them in the, on the ground. There we go. All right, so this, the way that we install the Essex trellis, and this one we forced it in over a rose where there was a rock in the way and you can see we kind of bent it <laughs> but it's going to be fine Oops. so and right now is actually probably the best time to be doing this considering the, the soil uh, is, so is so wet. wet wow oh that went in so easy our roses are really starting to swell oh i don't like to prune them until april but everything's ahead of schedule i can't believe how far that went in without any give does that look back. even it looks like a really good spot okay I am getting pricked alive by uh, Ancient Mariner here. So the Essex trellis comes apart into different chunks like this. So you can add them or subtract them depending on how large your shrub is. I like to not put the full six feet on 
if the shrub is still tiny because <laughs> I think that looks silly. How is that as far as like level? The level is really good. I think it's going to be fine. The yeah. shrub is centered. The chicken yes. wire is not. The shrub, the chicken wire is not, but the, the clematis is centered. Yes. And this will fill this whole thing this season, I think. Especially because it's been in, has it been in, this will be its third season or second season? 2023, we did this tear. This garden is 2023, or 2022. Two. Okay, so this will be its, right, so this should be its leap after its sleep yes. and creep. Would you, would you mind handing me that top piece, please? Wow, the roses are really ahead of schedule this year. That makes me a little nervous. Has anyone experienced this? What happens if your roses start too early? We're not going to prune them just yet. I think that right. if they have any die back, then they just get pruned more. Right. Is that straight up and down? Um, not really. I can't. It's a little bit. You're pushing it a little towards away from you. Okay. The ones closest to you need to go in more. That all of a sudden just started to look so much better. Strangely, it was the bent one that needed to be adjusted. Better? Yeah, that looks much better. Okay. Yeah, and you can see how there's a little, a little difference in the spacing, just because that there's a, a piece right in here missing. That's the one that we pull out to keep it a little shorter till it fills up. Yeah, I think that's going to do great. Good job. So our last clematis of group two that we have is a very cool Olympia. We got this at Trader Joe's. Um, they had a trio. They had three different colors. This one um, is very bluey purple, gorgeous, gorgeous clematis, big flowers. It blooms a, quite a lot for being only in the ground one year. I am going to bring it down pretty hard. Um, the reason for that is this is a tiny trellis. It's not a big um, plant. Yeah, doesn't this one only get about four feet tall? Five. Yeah, it was like a four to five, five, six ish, yeah. you know, not big, but it'll definitely fill the trellis, especially if we take it down. Plus it started growing sideways as I had, I was learning about training. So I'm just going to take this all the way down to the bottom rung of the trellis. In this case, clematis are those kind of plants that love to be pruned, especially group two and three. Oh, this is going to be so happy. Oh, that's right. Cause group one doesn't like to be pruned at all. Right. So misspoke groups two and group three like, like to, be, to pruned. be pruned, not group one. Look at, oh, and they have the funniest little, where's that seed head? I had one in my hand. It was, they're just like these little fuzzy things. Yeah, they're pretty. So that takes care of that and we can move on. To our next group. Yeah, wow, took it way down. Oh, filming is getting interrupted because we have a special delivery coming from our favorite local garden center, Fatigans. We're getting some soil. Well, here it is, half of the delivery. Yeah, we got the Bar Harbor blend. This is the potting soil we used last year and loved it. OMRI, super organic use listed. It is tons of compost and it's made from things like lobsters and crabs and all that sort of stuff. Um, and of course we know Bar Harbor is beautiful and in Maine, right on the coast actually. Um, the other product we're gonna be using for the first time this year is Penobscot Ooh, blend. Let me go to the other side of you for lighting purposes. Yeah, so the Penobscot blend, again, the compost, it's oyster shell based, all organic and this has the mycorrhizae in it. So Penobscot is something you use in your planting hole when you're planting your shrubs, your trees, perennials. We might even throw some in with the annuals if we get in the spirit, but this is what we're gonna be using to give our newly planted shrubs and trees. Yeah, get their roots off to a good start. The best start. So then coming around the corner back here, these elevated beds, we're going to take some of this old soil out that we didn't really care for because it was a uh, mess, inexpensive brand. And we're replacing it with this. We're going to be using Castine blend. This is your raised bed mix. It has so much good stuff in it. It's not even funny. 
but because we're using the elevated beds, we also were a little concerned with drainage and also weight. Yes, yeah, so they recommend, Gardeners recommends in the elevated beds that we have, that you use potting soil because of the weight when it gets wet. Right. So one of the things that Bar Harbor is so good for, because it's designed for containers, is good drainage. So what we have is a 50-50 mix. So we have all the good stuff, and all the good stuff plus drainage will do a 50-50 blend in all of these. And wait until you see the mathematician level calculations I had to do to figure out how many of these we need in there. All right, so let's get back on track. We were over at Betty Corning, the Clematis on our Gothic Arch, and you said that Betty Corning is a group three, which means what? It means it is the easiest to prune. The cool thing about the Viticella, I believe, is one of the names you could call a group three, is that they need to be pruned all the way to the to very close to the ground, about 12 inches or so is what's recommended, because they're such a powerful grower that they shoot straight up, put out tons and tons of growth. They tend to bloom a little bit later than the other ones because they start, um, oh, I should mention, they start from or bloom on new wood. So you don't have to have to worry about them not blooming. Do we prune above buds or we don't worry about yes, that? Yes, we're going to prune above buds. In this case, I'm going to go down here and just take a look. Keep in mind, this is a generous gardener rose. So I'm looking in here to find... Let me pull this back a little bit. Find, oh, those we're... are plugs for our lights. <laughs> oh, yeah, those are, that's an extension cord. <laughs> Um, oh, I see new growth. New growth from the base. Look at that. This is going to do really well. Wow. So technically... You oh, I see swollen buds too. Yep, swollen buds here, swollen buds here. I think for our first year of giving this the prune, I think I want to go right here. All right. Um, I approve. I think that would be a good spot to go. Leave a little bit above and give... Boop. I think that'll give this a really good start and start splitting in different directions. Are those the point. only two coming from the ground that provided all that growth? Yes. Wow, they, they did amazing this year then. Yeah, so what I actually think we should do is when these start to grow, we should maybe pull one of those vines to this side. Okay. So they grow up with the rose a little differently. All right. And I guess the only hard part is now we have to pull this out. All right, so I think let's... I can do that. I mean, yeah, and we, some of them are probably wired in a little, oh, wow. Nope. <laughs> no, that, that came right out. That just crumbled a bit. I do think we should put that cage back around it, though, because the bunnies are hungry. The bunnies, yes, they're hungry this time of year. So we'll put that back on there, and uh, then you're going to prune the other side. Oh, yes, because I've learned. Let's do Watch out for our bobo. <laughs> We're going to. Yeah. We're going to make a better system for this in the spring, in the later spring, because it's already meteorological spring, we learned on Gardening Simplified Podcast. A better system? What do you mean? I'm going to spray paint that black. Oh, okay. And then it makes them disappear, but right. we'll still protect the base of our stuff. Love it. All right. I am ready to tackle this. I feel like I learned. It was very straightforward. So first thing I got to do is remove this chicken wire, which I think will be the most difficult part of the entire process. <laughs> Accomplished. Then, let's get down here with him. I see all the new growth coming up. One, two, there's more on this side than there are on the other side. I think this side gets more sun, You're right? right? Well, the, not for long with the bobo. Well, in that case, I'm going to cut it there. You already want to go up higher because the other ones we cut at 12 inches at the first trellis bar. But this one has more growth, so I thought kind of to even them out, I'd cut it a little further. Sure. Is that, that not I mean, great you're, thinking? You can't hurt it. So and find a nice one. swollen section. I don't see swollen on this one. Oh, I see it swollen there. Yeah, I would go there because you can tell that that wood changed. So this only grew two vines and did so many flowers last year. Wow. It made it about five or almost six feet. This year it will touch the top, I would guarantee. Oh, yeah. And the generous gardener rose will touch the top. I know. Look, last year it got so close. God, I can't wait to tackle these things. They're, they're all swollen, I can tell you that much. I mean, look at all the, the buds. Yeah. 
All right, that's it. Now I just have to put this back around. Careful of the bobo. Ooh. And just watch the base of the clematis. Oh yeah, that too. So many things to watch out for in the garden. Gotta feed that bird feeder. Uh oh, empty bird feeder. Wow, it's wet back here. So Eric, this is the jolly good clematis. This is a proven winners that has a really, really pretty kind of lavendery pink bloom. And this is a group three. Group three, so it does get pruned really heavily. And you can see we have it on this tuter, a clematis <laughs> on a tuter. It grew very well, but I will tell you, this gets sprinklered. So do you think we're going to move it? I'm feeling it. The buds are swelling. It's it's alive. All right. You, yeah, cut it wherever you think is the right spot. That there clematis has been cut. Does clematis hold on to things on its own? Or yes. It does? It does. See how it's got... See, yeah, look at how the, these were all swollen. Wow. Yeah. So it was ready to push the growth out there. But yeah. since it's a type 3, we have to take it down or and, it gets messy. And this gets full sun until these hydrangeas leaf out. Right. So what do you think, though? Should we move it? I... This, it, I think it was the sprinkler. Wait, why do you want to move it? Because it did terribly and got a lot of, like, mildewy looking. I don't remember that happening. It was all brown. I don't remember that. I feel like it was good. Well, let's try it this year and see what happens. All right, we don't have to move it. It'll look really pretty in this spot. Just clip those to the base of the uh, trellis. I used those to kind of encourage the vines in the directions I wanted, not because it needed help. This one I think we're going to have to put back together at some point. That doesn't make for interesting video content. All right, so that's all good to go. It's protected from the rabbits. We've got uh, daffodils poking up and alliums of some kind. Oh yes, we have alliums in here. We have Scylla in here. There might be Kamasia in here. And that leads us to our final Clematis. So our final Clematis had a rough start. And when I mean that, it was in a container that had a little trellis in it and they had wrapped the long vine around it. So when it was planted, it just created this tangled web for the first year. So I'm really excited to set this free, let it grow correctly up the trellis. Um, and pink mink is so pretty. It has lots of tiny, adorable flowers. Let's see here. Lots of swollen buds. Do you think I should go pretty far on this? Yeah, and we have to, we have to switch this trellis out too, to keep with the uh, round trellis in the patio garden aesthetic. That was pretty easy. <laughs> that looked pretty easy. <laughs> Pruning uh, type three. I, yeah, like maybe we just need to always fruit or uh, plant type three. <laughs> I have to be honest. It didn't seem that different than type two to me. But I guess as the years go on, yes. we'll discover the difference more thoroughly. Right. So let's switch out this trellis. You did it. You're so athletic. I'm so athletic. Watch you're, out. You're like a... <gasps> Perfect. Good job. Those leak. The water catches in it. So just careful. Uh, oh, yeah. These were the prototypes of the Square Essex trellis. Oh, right. We got them at the Gardener Supply clearance tent. <laughs> yes. And they said, yeah, these were the ones that they... These are the prototypes. <laughs> but uh, if you are interested in the Square Essex trellis, we do have it in our gardener's shop. And then we're switching it with Claire Austin's trellis. See, this one I spray painted black. Oh, you yeah. Yep. Notice the chicken wire. Our rabbit or protections have to be You didn't notice the chicken black. wire. This was a more official chicken wire application. You can see I spray painted it, zip tied it, buried it gently in the ground. 
that's what I think we should do on the other side. And then, yeah, then they just kind of become a permanent part of the structure. And then by the time everything leaks out and grows around it, you don't even notice it. Yeah, what I did is I put it in a cardboard box and I just sat there. Oh, There's yeah. got to be a better way to do it. Well, I was just going to say, I think that's a good idea. Just, just keep spraying. Okay. Claire, Austin is also potentially having a bit of a move. I don't know. I kind of like her here. I like her there too. She was another one we found like end of season clearance and she was a stick. So she's just getting established and I hate to like move her again. All right, center that sh shrub, clematis, climbing vine. <laughs> <laughs> Clearly there was a rock when we did this one too. I think that's a good place. Uh, it is. I would take these are to get these in the ground most efficiently. I find if you take the top layers off and work solely with the base, then you just shove it down. Yes. A little on the front, a little on the back. Yeah. And we want that nice and deep in the ground because it gets windy back here. We can also do like a, a drill. Do oh, the an legs auger. Down further? Do the auger. I think the back needs to go down further from this angle. I usually bring the rubber mallet out too. Ooh, how's that? Oh, should we do the rubber mallet? Well, let's see. I was just wondering if that's deep enough to make it sturdy enough. That one over there is a tiny bit lower. If it's worth doing, it's worth doing right. Oh, you found the mallet. I have the mallet. Give it a little tap tap. A little gentle tap tap. I feel winded still from moving all that soil. I know, I'm really excited about that soil. Ooh. Oh yeah, that's working. That one needs to go down the most, I think. Is this there one? A, nope. That one. Do you think there's a stone there or something? No, it's going down. Let's see what it looks like. All fixed up. We've had this one a long time. This trellis. Whoop. How'd we do? All right, if you stand up, I can I can judge your work. All right, we're leaning a little north, just a little bit. A little north? It's leaning north. Okay. This way, it looks good from this angle. Let me go back to the other side. Gorgeous. Perfect. Oh, there's so much stuff in here. The bee bomb. That's bee bomb. Sedum. All right. So I think that covers pruning for clematis. Group yes. one pruning, which is no pruning. Group, Group two, two pruning. Let me make sure I have this right. Is pruning about an inch above a set of buds that are about a foot to two feet off the ground. Yes. And if it's doing really well and established, you can prune it higher than that. Okay. So you can, you kind of can't mess up that pruning. Right. Just don't prune it to the ground. And then group three clematis is prune as far down as you can, but leave a set of buds. Yeah. But most of it'll grow from the base. Basically. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, I appreciate the lesson today. <laughs> Well, that about covers it for pruning clematis mm -hmm. in our garden and a uh, really exciting soil delivery yes. and changing some trellises around. So again, I am Eric. And I'm Christopher. And we're Grow For Me Gardening. Thanks for growing with us.